Hi everybody, it's Drew here at Drucifer's Idiocracy. I hope this finds you all happy, healthy, and um, for those who are in recovery, sober as well. Um, sorry I haven't been making videos. I've been preparing for my move, but I am nearly all packed. There's just stuff that is, are going to have to be last minute items. Um, so um, I'll show you my bed right now stuff like that um so um anyways i didn't know what to make my video about today i mean like always i you know um but my friend is flying in uh you guys saw her on a video her name is kelsey she was on that uh one video with me and adam and um she's flying here from louisville and um she is gonna get here late and I was gonna take her to this place here in Oklahoma called Torchies, Torchies Tacos, but I'm afraid we're gonna be too late so I'm gonna take her to Brahms and anybody who has ever been through Oklahoma and been to a Brahms will understand why that's a good second choice because it's specific to the Plains, Great Plains area. Um, really good food, really good um, ice cream, so I'm really looking forward to I was going to take her there for ice cream anyways, so um, hopefully we make it to Torchies on time, so because they have some delicious freaking tacos. Um, if you ever come through Oklahoma, stop at a Torchies. They have this, uh, they have like crazy names for all the tacos, but there's this one called the Trailer Park. It's fried chicken um, with a bunch of other stuff, like some spicy stuff. Uh, not too spicy, though. Uh, and you can make it trashy by putting queso on it. Always make it trashy. Um, it's so, so, so good. And, like, two will... I mean, my mom only eats one. But, like, two for a guy will fill you up. Uh, but their queso is delicious. Uh, they also have, like, a side of black beans. That's really good as well. Or uh, refried black beans. Anyway, sorry. I don't know. Not just black beans. Refried black beans. And they are so good. With the chips and queso are good. Refried black beans are good. Um, I haven't tried all of their tacos. But they do have other tacos that are also really good. I just always get the trailer part because it's delicious. Um, anyways. Um, oh, I didn't even think to call to see if they're open. Most places in Norman here are open again. Um... And if not, maybe they'll do a curbside service. But um, it's um, it's I've been a while since I've eaten there, so it'll be cool to go somewhere one last time that I that I do love eating because I leave tomorrow. Oh my god, I'm really excited. Um, one because I am finally getting to venture out onto my own, and um, two. Um, all my friends that I've met from treatment both times are there, and I'm just excited to have friends who are going through the same things as me, and not that my friends that I, I met in, um, my home group in AA aren't the same, but also some of them I don't see all the time, and some of them have, like, years of sobriety. So it's hard to identify with them when they have an easier time staying sober than I do. So, you know, with all these people who are new new or newer in sobriety, um, it's, it's like we're fighting the same battle and so we can commiserate together, you know? Um, it's... I find it easier to be built up by people I can identify with, like, on a personal level. You know, like, going to a speaker meeting where someone has, like, 30 years, I'm like, I find it hard to identify. Like, I can identify with their story of where they've been, but when it comes to the getting sober and staying sober, I'm just like, I'll never be there. Not that I don't have any hope, but at the same time, it's just 30 years? I mean without being sober or not. I just, it's so far away. So like, 
you know, when you get when you're at an interview, which speaking of interviews, I'll get to there in a second. Um, when you're at an interview and they're like, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm like, is the world still going to be here in five years? Am I going to be in a car crash? Um, <laughs> you know, like, it's so hard to say, like, where I'll be in 30 years and sober. You know, if I'll still be sober, I pray I'm still sober. But, you know, it's just, it's so hard to imagine that and to fathom still being sober in 30 years. Um, it's not that I don't have faith in myself. I, I do have faith in myself. It's just, it seems so far away that it's just like, I don't know that I'll ever get there. You know, it's, I, in that sense, I'm kind of like a kid sometimes. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you're like, it's September and you're like, Christmas is so far away, even though it's only a few months, you know, or it's like beginning of the school year and you're like, summer's never going to get here, which I mean, that's still a long time. That's August, September, October, November, December, January, February, um, March, April, May, 10 months. So, I mean, that's a long time, but it's also not. But to a kid, that might as well be five years. <laughs> you know, so um, time does fly by for me. Like, I can't believe the summer is already, you know, half over. And I did spend the, you know, most of it in rehab. <laughs> but um, anyways, about the interviews... I have three interviews set up already. Uh, wait. No, two interviews. One was supposed to be like a video interview, and I decided not to do it. But I did have three. And that third one, I think it was for, like, it didn't seem legit anyways. Like, who wants to do an interview with you where you just record answers, and like, that are predetermined? You know, like, I don't know, it seemed kind of, like... And I looked up the business, and it said nothing about what they did. It was just, like, and I, I, ones that were like that when I lived in St. Louis were, like, the ones where you had to go sell, like, you know, tickets to businesses, to, like, shows and sporting events and shit like that. So I was just like, I'm not even going to mess with it. It just didn't seem legit. But there is one that's for LabCorp. It's not phlebotomy, which is my career path right now, um, but it is for a um, intake center where all the samples come in that have been drawn, and I have to process them, like put them in the centrifuge, enter them into the system, pour, the, pour off the excess, put the um, plasma or serum, serum um, into um, aliquots, stuff like that, and label them, enter in data, all that, all that stuff. Um, and it pays really decent. It'll be the highest paying job I would ever have had if I get it. Um, but there was, I was actually contacted by a recruiter for a different job at this same location. And whenever they sent my resume to LabCorp, LabCorp was like, oh, he's got phlebotomy experience and, and processing experience. Let's, Let's give him this job instead, or offer him this job instead. I was like, F, yeah. So it's going to be like $15.12 an hour, because uh, it's from 5 p.m. to 1.30 a.m., so I get a shift differential for uh, working late. So um, I will gladly work until 1.30 a.m. if it means making fifth, almost fifteen twenty an hour. Um because I've, I've never made that much, and having to live on my own now, and my parents, said they'll, they'll help support me until the end of August, um, so hopefully, even though I will potentially have a job, maybe they'll still help me, help me a little bit, and I know I complain about them a lot, but they have helped me a lot, and it would be nice to be able to get ahead on some bills and um, things like my credit cards. I need to get my credit cards paid down stat. Ooh, excuse me. Um, because it's, it's become very evident that, um, 
I don't have bad credit. My credit's good. It's not great, but it's not bad. Um, I'm not going to tell you the number, but it's in the 600s, upper 600s. Um, so it's not terrible. It could be a lot better if I could pay more on my credit cards and get my credit card debt down. And once I charge something to my credit card, pay it off immediately, um, stuff like that. And that's what I want to get to be able to do, but I haven't been working a lot. And when I was working at this last job, I was working PRN and my paychecks would be like $127 um, sometimes, or maybe 187 85 you know, like, it just depended on how much I worked because I was PRN. And um, it was just really frustrating, like, to try to survive working that job. And because I had to be available to work any shift, I couldn't get another job. So it was just, it was frustrating. Really, really frustrating. So I... Um, fell into using again because I was just so unhappy with that job. Um, and I had a lot of time off and I could accept or not accept uh, shifts. Um, so if I was high, I would be like, no, I can't work today. I have this going on, you know, and I didn't have to talk to anybody. I would, I would just text. So, um, you know, it was money lost, but you know, it's better than going into work high. Um, but I'm, going to turn that around and clearly not do that anymore. Um, the only thing that's going to suck if I do get that job with LabCorp is that like my social life is going to go down to like basically zero except for at night. Um, well, the week, not at night, sorry. Um, on the weekends. And if I have any friends who do anything in the morning before work, but I highly doubt it. People get up, eat breakfast, go to work. But I don't know if I have any friends who like have days off during the week or, um, or anything like that. I think I have one friend, Brooklyn. Um, I mentioned her in, in my, I'm out of rehab video, um, from the, the day after or, the day I got out of rehab, I don't remember, because I think it was nighttime when I actually got out of rehab. No, the sun was still up. Never mind. I think it was the day I got out of rehab. Um, oops. I'm going to set my phone over here so I don't keep playing with it and make you guys think I'm jerking off or something. Um, but I think she said she has days off during the week. So if I get that job, I'll still have someone I can socialize with before five o'clock. And, um, anyways, I'm going to do, um, IOP once I get insurance there. So I'll be able to kind of socialize cause it's still done via zoom. Um, but I'll get to see people and still work on my sobriety and stuff like that. So, um, it'll be really good. I'll, I'll get to see Robin. She and I talked the other day and that was fun. I'll get to see Hannah. She was a group counselor for like a week and a half. Well, I was in there, so she leads the IOP in the morning, which is when I would have to do it if I get this job. So everyone, cross your fingers for me that I get this job, because I really would love to get it. Um, it's paramount that I get something sooner than later and something that's not shitty. <laughs> Um, anyways, I am glad that I have all of you for support. You've all been so sweet with, um, everything. When I talk about sobriety, when I talk about, um, my life, complaining about my parents, um, you've all been so sweet and generous with th the things that you say and, it's really made all the difference in the world whenever I'm having a rough day or a rough couple days. Um, the other day, I had a really, really bad day. And it had to do with my parents, my friend's relapse scene that I talked about in that one video. And, um, and uh, what else happened? Oh, I had a doctor who won't refill a script. And it's one of, like, 
my scripts that I really need. And he won't refill it because he fired me because I had that suicide attempt and relapsed. So I relapsed and then had that suicide attempt. But um, he said I wasn't following his treatment plan. He just didn't like working with an addict because he told me one time before that that he wasn't invested in my care. So I think that was his way of trying to hope that I would stop going to him. Um, Because who the hell says that to a patient? I'm just really not invested in your care. Um, But anyways, it is what it is. I ordered some... um, some of it from a Canadian pharmacy today, but it says it's going to take six to eight weeks to get here. Now, normally whenever they say four weeks, it comes in like a week to two weeks. So hopefully six to eight weeks is two to four weeks. Um, So we will see. Everything else I've ever ordered that comes from overseas during COVID has taken normal time. So if it's coming from Europe, it should take two weeks. Uh, which is about the average time that things that things coming from the international pharmacy has taken. So I can survive two weeks without my Latuda, which is my bipolar antidepressant. Um, I know I haven't really talked about my mental illness uh, illnesses all that much. I just touch on them whenever they're affecting me. Maybe I could make a video about that sometime because I know there are a lot of people out there who suffer and either aren't vocal about it because they're embarrassed, or um, they just don't like sharing it because of the stigma. Um, Because there is a big stigma when it comes to it, and I've been, I've received the brunt of that, especially in the gay community. Uh, People don't understand, and they don't care to understand, and they hear things like bipolar and instantly call you crazy. I've been called crazy to my face multiple times, and um, it's really disheartening especially whenever it's from someone who you thought was a friend or it was a guy that you were interested in. And, um, yeah, just really sucks. But, um, that's another reason why I don't date anymore. And I'm trying not to become friends with gay guys. Although my friend Brian, which who I didn't talk, no, I did talk about him. I did talk about him. My friend Brian from treatment. Um, he's really cool. And he seems like somebody who wouldn't judge me for that. And he knows I have mental illness issues because I would always take freaking pills all day long when I was in treatment. He FaceTimed me today and it was really fun. Um, And he asked me to pick him up from treatment uh, when he gets out on the 30th or 31st of this month. So... um, I'm stoked for that. I feel really honored. I'm going to get to take him to his sober living place, which is like just down the street from where I live. Um, So like some of my most favorite people from treatment live within a stone's throw of where I live. Um, All minus Luke. Luke lives in Lexington, which is an hour and a half away, but we're trying to convince him to move to Louisville um, because he doesn't have a job in Lexington anymore. And, um, he needs to be close to people that care about him. Um, after I talked to his mom, when he went back into treatment, um, just things that she told me made me come to that conclusion. And, um, all of our friends were already saying it anyways, but without, without knowing what she said. And she didn't say anything that's like telling or things that, are private, really. I think it was just things that she could tell because they're really close. So, Luke, if you watch this, please know that your mother was not spilling the tea. Um, I think she's just very perceptive of you because she loves you. And um, so don't be mad at her for talking to me. She really cares about you. And she was just really worried. And um, I think she enjoyed talking to somebody who's been there and had guidance for heard um of how to handle oh, how, uh, how you should be handled i guess and just guidance on how to help you um so that's what most of the conversation was she wasn't just she wasn't bitching about you she wasn't um you know 
just saying all the stuff that you've done. I mean, they did tell me what happened, but you know, that's, I'm not going to repeat that on here. That's your own business to tell. Um, so anyways, enough about that. He's probably not even going to watch this. I think he only watches it whenever I share to, um, to Facebook. So, um, you probably won't even see this. Oh, well, it's 8.01, and if Kelsey's plane wasn't delayed an hour and a half, she would already be here. But, because of lightning and the uh, crew not being in Charlotte on time, um, it was delayed an hour and a half. So I think even if there hadn't been lightning, the crew wasn't there yet. Like, WTF, mates. So... Wish me luck that we get to make it to Torchies, and uh, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go pick up Adam, then go pick up. Um, oh, the signs in my car. Um, then go pick up uh, Kelsey from the airport. I made a sign. Her last name is Farmer, and it says "Random Girl from Farmer" or "Random Girl I Met from FarmersOnly.com." So um, we have a group chat, and her nickname is Farmers Only. So. Ooh, I got a message. Oh, it's from Adam. Okay. Sorry. Um, now I've lost my train of thought. But anyways, um, I hope I can sleep tonight because I'm just really excited and, um, I just hope that I have a good trip tomorrow. Kelsey and I are going to have a fun time in the car. I just know it. Um, it'll be my first time seeing her in person since like... See, I got there May 30th, probably since, like, July 14th, somewhere in there. Because we were there only two weeks together. But, like, we became fast friends and were, like, hooked at the hip. Me, her, and Luke, and Brooklyn. And, um, like, they made me feel, like, so hip because I'm 35 and they're all 24 or 25. And I was like, I'm a cool kid. Like, like I, I was, like, the mom on Mean Girls, like, <laughs> it's like, I'm a cool gay guy, <laughs> you know, like, I'm not like other gay guys, I'm a cool gay guy, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, those three really made those first couple weeks good, because I was feeling a little raw after the suicide attempt. And, um, they made me kind of, not forget it, but, like, take my mind off it. Um, because that's something, like, you just can't forget. It needs to be something that you don't forget. So you don't forget the pain that it caused everybody. And remember how much it scares you so it doesn't happen again. But, I mean, that's, what, my fourth suicide attempt? So... I thought after the time I tried to hang myself that that would um, that would have been the last because I was the first one that I was aware of. Before that, I, I always took pills and um, was always really out of it. But this time I tried to take pills again, and I was actually the most uh, close to being successful, the most successful I've ever been. Um, I am all over the place. Damn. <laughs> um, that was Adam again. Um, I was telling him, telling him about the sign. I didn't tell him what it says yet, but I just told him he's going to love it. Um, ooh, need to wrap this up so I can post this 
and um, get going. Because this is going to probably take, it's 25 minutes. It's probably going to take 20 minutes to load, 15 minutes to load. I bet 20 minutes to load. All right, well, I'm going to head out. Um, I know this was another totally effing random talk, but, um, you know, I think that's maybe maybe that's just what my videos are going to be about now, except for the one in the car tomorrow. I won't be able to post that until probably Monday because I'm, I imagine I'm going to get there super late tomorrow. But if I can, I will post it tomorrow night. But Kelsey and I are going to be ridiculous on the road and um, have a good time. So anyways, please like, share, and subscribe. Get me up to those 300 subscribers. I am so close. I think I only have 10. And then I will do my next giveaway. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, wait. I have to do this for Noni May. London Fog. All right. Like, share, subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.